to Mike Chank Waifu Waifu. Check, Mike. Check, waifu, waifu, King, Taliano. Is that you? It's time to get cutting. What's up? This is episode two seventy three of Mike. Check, waifu, waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu is where you can get early access to the video version of this podcast. Is where you can get access to the Patreon exclusive pre show over there on Patreon. Make sure you go to Patreon.com if you're supporting us and check out the pre show. Also, uh, the bonus podcast, the after story, where we sit and talk about whatever we want. We just freestyle and go off the top of our head. Science, movies, music, whatever. Uh, what will happen? <laughs> Tells laughing. I'm reading the, I'm oh. reading the wrong chat. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's gonna, that's going to get fun. Anyway, <laughs> this show is brought to you by the Patreon producers that keep the lights on. Shout out to Yahoo for supporting us for many, many, many months in weeks we appreciate y'all so very much christian the archive is rob from daddy's to talk podcast fear glaze yams jay lee trey from show go high Ked the pro from chaotic culture explicitly all oh, for one map more from him later monique williams send me say frozen rob stone and last but certainly not least our guy t money fingers 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 Fingers, fingers, fingers. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for supporting us. We, we love y'all to death. And all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Make sure y'all go check out the pre-show. Uh, 273 is up now, or it was up before this episode went live, the video version. So check that out. Um, and feel free to comment on it, because we read those comments every week on the pre-show. And we talk about it there. So check it out. It was a pretty long one this time. I think it was like 15, 20 minutes of a pre-show. It was neat. Nice. Yeah. Anyway. A big episode for you guys today. Ah, but before we get into that, let's ask Sal, how's you doing? How's you doing? What the fuck? How are you doing? I I'm doing well. Mm. I, I'm doing well, brother. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been a good week. Yes. Obviously, your birthday was technically the beginning mm-hmm. of the week. Um, Thank you, everybody, for the love was wednesday mm-hmm. so uh we celebrated that had a good time um i i got a lot of rest good. <laughs> I, I got a lot of rest um normally i do my homework like in sections throughout the week i did not do any homework until today mm. um and uh it's discrete mathematics and matrices and subsets and all kind of other stuff mm. and it's surprising that this you hear me out it could just be because i'm 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 a math person it this yeah which was always weird to me since it's, seventh grade it eighth it's, grade surpri- it's it's crazy <laughs> right it's crazy to me because it's so it's it's still new right it's still new information but it's so easy and i was showing my wife and she i showed her like what i was doing because uh one of the one of the ways I got to figure out how to get the answer is I got to actually build a binary code box, right? And fill in the binary box, and like this will tell me what the actual code is. And then I got to draw a little chart and put the lines, and this will tell me what the actual code is. And my wife's like, I don't understand none of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, turn this away from me. And I was like, All right, I just I just learned this too, like like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> but but I also understand that this is just my my field. This is what I'm good at. I'm like excited that. about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you feeling this week, though, bro? I'm doing great. I want to give a very special shout out to everybody that congratulated me on our last week's announcement of me getting married, and hence why we haven't recorded an after story because I've been prepping for that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, to be honest, I can't wait till it's over. <laughs> I just want it to be done. Even though it's like an, a small, intimate thing, I got to worry about, you know, my mom's and sister and her kids and my father and... A lot of energy. A lot yeah, of people. A lot of people. More people than I thought was going to be coming to this. But again, I'm just glad to have 
close family in, in, in France to just pull up and that it means a lot even though it's you know small and intimate it means a lot but other than that man it's been great man I've been enjoying my, my, my game time with Metaphor more about that in the pre-show make sure you check that out mm-hmm. uh, and I've been enjoying actually I've been enjoying this season this fall season is is it's kind of neat. It's it's different, and we're gonna talk about that here shortly when we get into the anime, which is now. So, as we do, as we start every episode, and I forgot to do this during a pre-show. <laughs> it's prep episode of the week. So, oh, tell, yeah. Yeah. what is your episode of the week this week? I hang on. I'm kind of struggling with my episode of the week this week because I feel like I have an obvious answer. Like I could easily say Bleachery Zero, right? Um, those, yeah, we can, we we are we specifically excluded those from episodes of the week. Um, and I also don't want to necessarily say reincarnated aristocrat because I feel like that's also another obvious mm. one. Sheesh, brother! <laughs> Come on, man! Mm. I just love the storytelling there. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go with one that's that's a little different, and just mostly because of some of the like backstory we got here. Um, the hero was banished from his party is in fact the strongest. Interesting. I think I I really enjoyed this episode, and I even really enjoyed the the development of of the MC. So yeah, bro, I'm gonna go with the healer who was banished from his party. Wow, I was not expecting that because we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Um, you know, this is kind of a tough one for me. Okay, so I already know the uh, Discord's episode of the week. Um, I'm gonna go with um. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but I'm gonna go with our guy Frozen Sleeper, Blue Mabaru, Blue, Blue Mabaru. Mm. His sleeper came out. It's a, it's a period piece. The, uh, the old you know period piece that he that dropped. I'm giving it to this one because most people forgot it was coming out late. It's a it's a late drop, but surprisingly. This this show, the beginning of it was very lackluster, and I'm being honest about that. It was very, whatever. Who cares? These two samurai going to meet, you know, going into this town for for whatever reasons, and then almost at a a turning point within the episode, just episode one, it was a turning point that had me emotional in it. So I'm like, okay, fantastic first episode for a show that I mostly forgot about until it popped up on my any list. So. Yeah, blue blue <laughs> blue Mombaro is was an incredible episode. The only thing about it, and uh, just to go into it, the first episode dropped. It looked, it didn't, it looked weird, and I'm and not meaning weird in a bad way. For some reason, something about these period pieces when they look, I don't know how to, so anime. I it just don't fit for me. It didn't fit for I, me. I had the same perspective you had because I felt like the way that. It looks it almost should have been softer, but they committed to yeah. like a harder line or something yes. like that. Yes, something about um, it. Like it didn't look ugly at all. Yeah, it no, just no. didn't fit what I'm used to for the period pieces. I, I guess maybe because I'm thinking of uh um oh God, the incredible one we just finished recently and I can't think of the name right now, which is crazy. Uh Ravens. Yes. Uh, Raven. Yeah, no. I what is going on with me? That. I can't think of it. Y'all know what we're talking about, though. The Raven, when we uh, we were gushing about last season. Jeez, that's crazy. That, we're going to think about it in 10 minutes. I know. We're going to know the name here in any second now. And I know y'all yelling at y'all radios like, yo, it's up, blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you. Um, something in Ravens. Court Raven. Some shit. I don't know. Y'all know what we're talking about. Court but, Raven can't choose his master or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Whatever it is. But. That that one was Yada Garatsu. Yada Garatsu. Raven does not choose its master. Yes, Yada Garatsu. That's the art style that I expect. Or even um Elusive Samurai. Something like that too would have would have looked fire with this. But this is like I don't know, very it looked very Saturday morning cartoony anime. Um that didn't fit. But other than that, brilliant episode. Very well done. Got extremely emotional at the end there. That's why it was my episode of the week. It was good. I, I- I actually, uh, I was looking at my list trying to figure out which one it was, and if I if I had seen, it, I probably would have chose that one as well. But yeah, I forgot that uh, I, I can't even find it on my list right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was incredible. So uh, this week's 
episode of the week for Discord and the Discord forums. Make sure you join Discord, discord.mikecheckwaifuwaifu.com. Just that simple. Anybody can join. Feel free to talk in the Mike Check forums to hopefully um, mean that your episode could be a episode of the week for the Discord. This time, funny enough, it's Goodbye Dragon Life. Is it? Hold the, up. The Goodbye Dragon Life forum was created by Christian the Archivist and, and they were just chopping it up about it. Um, a lot of it is some silly memes, but yeah, and it has 26 responses from the moment he created it, which was October 17th. So yeah, okay. Goodbye Dragon Life ended up being Discord's episode of the week this week, which is funny. Now, hear me out. Goodbye Dragon Life is uh, <laughs> it's definitely a comedy piece for sure. It's um, comedy. I don't know. It's I, I think it's more so trying to be serious. You think it's trying to be serious? Yeah. Oh no! Goodbye, Dragon Life. Hey, oh, no, that's yeah. No, I, it I'm, is. I'm thinking about the the the. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about the Snake Body Girl, and I'm just like, it's got to be comedy. But mm-hmm. everything that happens, like I can see some seriousness. In yeah, it. They're, they're trying to be serious with it. With you know her trying to you know fit in with humans and the discrimination and whatnot. It's all it's all very very something. But this week is Cut Week. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is the time where three episode, the three episode rule implies to now. It's the third week of the fall season for most shows. Um, a lot of shows drop two episodes, so it's the fourth. And I think it's maybe like one, maybe two shows outside of like late shows like Blue Mabaru, which just dropped this week. Mm-hmm. That drop that only has like maybe one or two. Ep- no, they all are past episode threes. Or they at episode three or past it, minus Blue Mabaru and then uh, Yakuza Fiance and Nina. Those are the only three that's not. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the community cuts, shall we? Let's do it. In Discord, we created a forum called 2024 Fall Cut Week. Let's see what gets cut out. I posted the uh, background of the, if you're watching the YouTube video version of this podcast, I posted the background of this podcast with no words and no, like no Navi in it at all. (laughs) It's just blank. I just cut it out. (laughs) Um, Anyway, all for one, Matt, one of the Patreon producers, our guy, he says mechanical arms, just a waste of time to watch. Mm -hmm. Mechanical arms was one you mentioned at the beginning, right? The beginning of the season that you said, nah. One episode in, I was like, no. This actually blew my mind. And I kind of wanted to, I, I held back on responding all for one, Matt, because this actually is crazy. Let this grievance soul retire. He cut that. It has a few funny moments, but I'm not pressed to watch uh, this right now. Maybe it's a binge later for him, but interesting. Interesting. I, I, and I'm not sure if, what your thoughts are on this one, but <laughs> I'm actually enjoying let these grieving souls or let this grieving soul retire. Me too. Uh, Mostly for the world building because the world yeah. building is crazy. Yeah, I hate the the girl, um, the one I just introduced. I yeah. don't like her. She's cool, but I just don't like her. Um, I yeah. just don't like her. And then his third one is Orb. Nothing wrong with the show. Just simply decided to uh, just decided that I wanted to binge instead. And I see that as reasonable because yeah. this does seem like a show that a binge on it would probably go absolutely crazy. I kind of want to talk about Orb. Yeah. So I don't, should I save it for spoiler talk? You, you want to take it to spoiler talk? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let's do that then. We'll save it for spoiler talk. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Let's save it for spoiler talk. I'm going to talk about Orb there. Um, kind of got a lot to say about that. So yeah, spoiler talk will be a perfect place of doing that. Even though it's, I got a lot to say, I don't think it's going to be that much at the same time. So Forgive me okay. if, if that is kind of vague, but you you guys are you just listen to the episode. You'll you'll find out what I mean. Um, and then uh, yeah, that's it. Interesting. So he dropped those three. I'm I'm kind of shocked about uh, let this grievous soul retire because I think he would like it if he continued. Um, but I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it very much. Yeah. I, 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 the MC. I'm just like. I can I can kind of see, but then I'm like, nah, bro. He he is like kind of like this light to the show, 
mm-hmm. that makes that gives it, it it it's like this kind of charm. So yes, yes. Um, TCB says, uh, just one. I'm definitely considering dropping right now. It's terrified teacher at ghost school. I don't know what that is. I didn't watch it. Um, thought it was going to have a uh, thought it was going thought going in it'll have the same charm like uh, I, what I liked about Irama Kun, but nope. And he also mentioned a little bit later. He says, uh, "Let me find it." This is where I was laughing. Yeah, <laughs> he says, uh, "Let me see season one." Okay, let me find it. There it is, Blue Lock season two. He also cut that and he gave his reasons in the anime talk thread, but. He dropped Blue Lock season two, which is funny because most people are very highly, highly, highly disappointed with Blue Lock season two because mm. because the, the animation turned into visibly slideshows. And I got that from everybody that watched it. And also from where they left off in season one, it, it kind of continues on a note where it just starts uh, according to TCB. And this is a very I'm paraphrasing what he said. It just start introducing people that you don't. Know, really know or care about and they're doing like these crazy weirdo moves and it's, it's just he, he's, he's basically saying it lack interest you know what I'm gonna do him the honor of going to what is said in discord he says yeah blue lock season two isn't doing it for me why watch uh why watch this pretty looking slideshow when I can just read the manga and not miss anything animation wise and he said this sums it up and he posts this um I believe it's a discord post I'm not sure if it's him or not so uh Forgive me, but it says, yeah, episode two really felt like a slideshow with the effects. Basically, live 2D with some transitions. I think mm-hmm. VTuber show. <laughs> I think VTuber show from last season did a better job. Also, the cast mm-hmm. is just too massive and yet still added new guys who were supposedly better, further diluting the audience experience. Meanwhile, the football itself isn't getting any more interesting. Just weirdos with weird tricks slash powers. I got to be more brutal with uh, they, they got to be I got to be more brutal uh, with dropping sequels. And then, you know, sorry, to, I'm going to go Those to ours. Yeah, he, he was deaf. Whoever that was, was definitely spent. I think it was TCB, but it might have been a post from somewhere else. But it was it was perfectly put. But I got to I got to go to all for one. Matt, he said, you know, you got to do what Rob J said and temper your expectations on some of these shows. Uh but and I had to reply. I'm like, yeah, Rob J always say temper expectations, and that's completely understandable. I rock with that sentiment wholeheartedly. However, Rob J don't say lower expectations; just temper them. You can't go into Blue Lock expecting what you got in season one and, and not expect it to elevate it. You know, it's supposed to be better, not completely regressed to what it is now. Like, is even if you temper your expectations, why would you get worse? You know what I'm saying? So, I, sorry, but I'm not, you know, am I surprised? No, because it was kind of leaning towards that way towards the end of season one, to be fair. But um, I did like the cliffhanger where, where they and where they left off in season one. But it just, you know, I, I had a feeling. But that's just sports anime. For, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going yeah. yeah. to put sports anime in that box. But, yeah, it's just it's rough to see. It's rough to see. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I think that's it for, oh, Rob J, speak of the devil. Yeah, Rob J says, yeah, I dropped Yakuza Fiance. I just don't do high school romances anymore. And I unfortunately had to drop who banished, uh, the uh, who dropped healer who was banished. It's okay, but the MC isn't really giving me anything. Still haven't yet seen why he's the strongest. Maybe that comes down the line, but for me, I'm good off of it. I completely understand that, Rob J, because and this yeah. is and this is where we're going to go into ours cuts and, and 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 keeps. I'm not quite there on cutting banished from uh, the healer banished because of where it's leading to now. At the very end of this particular episode, this particular episode saved it for me at the end. But Rob J is 100 percent right. This main character is the most blandest, boringest. Un, like he's so side character so background character that it's hard for me to even care about anything that's going on like when I turn it on I'm like okay I'm watching it just to see if I can find out why he's the strongest or why he's so strong um, but like it's just he don't he don't he don't offer any personality at all 
Um, he's very, very, very bland, very dry, very boring character for a main mm-hmm. character. That's why I was shocked when you made it your episode of the week. So it's still making it for me, but barely. I understand. Like I said, I, I do understand. Now, uh, I would like to say, <laughs> and one that I, I kind of personally, I, I'm kind of over it at this point. I am over uh, Goodbye Dragon Life. Mm. I I don't want to watch it anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A hundred percent. And and at first I was very intrigued. Uh extremely so, especially with that opening episode. Yeah. It was, yeah. But I, I feel like uh what, what did you say? It was supposed to prog- progress and not regress on one of these comments in the forum chat. And I it, obviously we were talking about Blue Lock when you said that. Mm-hmm. But uh I feel like every everything since that first episode has been like meh for me. Yeah. And I, I I literally if I if I keep watching it it's literally just going to be background noise. Um, yeah. And for this show, I feel like it, it's not, even if it's background noise, I'm not going to really look at the screen. So I, mm-hmm. I feel like I have to cut it. I can make that space for something else. For me, I'm, I'm dropping Nina, the starry bride. Mm-hmm. And this show is just, even though it's dubbed too, like it'll be an easy watch because it's dubbed. Like I can literally look down on my phone or look anywhere else and just hear it and be fine. I can't even do that. Like I just don't, care about nobody it's, <laughs> it, Nina is unlikable Ars is unlikable everybody in this show is very unlikable why would I watch it you know what I mean it's very 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 tough to even consider liking Um, I don't I saw I dropped it after episode 2 <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm, I am going to I am going to keep a close eye though because this is Crystal Sleeper maybe it turns out to be incredible later down the road yeah um, give it yeah, so she says uh, she'll suffer for the masses. I have no choice because it's her sleeper. It's normally how we how we do sleepers. Um, but she's gonna let me know if it's if it's any good later. Um, now, also, I would also like to mention just just hear me out on this because uh, I, I I will I'm gonna watch uh, Nina Starry Bright. I haven't officially jumped into it. I was gonna wait for the three episodes. So I, I know how you were feeling about it. I was waiting for your opinion. <laughs> you think it's bad that but you, it's not yeah. uh, all right um, cuz that's one of the ones that's one of the ones I was waiting on um but uh and hear me out when I say this the only reason this is necessarily staying on my list as of right now because I do feel like it's going to get better um the only reason it's staying on the list right now is cuz it's my sleeper demon lord 2099 I'm not really feeling it bro what yeah this episode for me was was I would say mad decent, but I felt like it was less than that. What? Yeah. And I feel like things got more interesting. But it's it, it I feel like it's giving me so little. So this is the one we're reviewing at the end of the season. No, nah, that's a, that's just a, that's just like a I'm not saying it is definitely dropped. I'm saying that I would need well, you, something you, to entice me soon. You couldn't because it's your sleeper and it's the one we're reviewing, so it has right. it has to continue. Obviously, but, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> It, it, for you to theoretically cut it off, it's interesting to me because this episode was fire to me. I thought it did a very great job of actually offering something within these characters. And that's what I thought episode one was missing at first. If episode one was lacking the character until the end. And then when the end happened, it was like, okay, it got me. It got me back. And then it continued right. that from this. So it's like, you start off with, with the old girl and she's like, what happened with her in the past? And He's going through, and I'm like, I'm fucking enjoying it. What, and then, what, go ahead. Oh no, no, because I, I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I think I did enjoy that, but here, here's my issue, and this is just a personal thing because I literally, I saw myself keeping time for this episode, mm-hmm. and while they were talking and giving information and details and whatnot, I was in it. But I, I, I don't know if it was the him looking for work scene. I felt like I was watching that specific moment for ten minutes, bro. It did feel a little like, long in that part. I'm like, why is it? Why is this so long? Why am I still at this specific part? Yeah. Um, but uh, that's really what it is. It felt like the pacing was was dragging me out of the show. I had to literally pause it and come back to it. I right, mean, it I, me around that part. I love so the I fact. That, I love the fact that he's he's self aware. 
like being self aware, knowing like, he, like, look, I can't just be here and like, because normally in shows like this, you have this guy being an overconfident, like, but I'm gonna do more, yeah, very boisterous and eccentric, and then he'll be going around the town fucking some shit up, trying to prove a point, yeah, or trying to prove a point, not accept the fact that he's where he is right now. And this one, he's self aware. He's like, listen, I can't just sit here and let you provide for me. It was like it was just so much character within this episode that I'm like, yeah, this shit is great, and it's going to be great. At the end, it got a little scary though because he decided to become an influencer, which was an absolute genius idea. Um, even though I'm a little, so I'm a little iffy of iffy about this particular route he's going. But it makes sense for the for the world that he's in and what he's trying to do because he can't get the he can't get the implant and he needs to get the influence to get his power back. So like, what other way to doing that in a world where you have this? And I yeah. love the way they did that, and they worded it in the, in the way they worded it with the other character that was introduced this episode. It was fire. And I had the same logic you just said. All of that was in my head. I was like, "All right, this makes sense," but I hate it kind of yeah. because I feel like it can go very bad very mm-hmm. quickly. Same. Um, or and like by very bad, I mean like it, it would lose me in terms of intrigue, depending on how it carries out. But I, yes, I don't think they're gonna do that. But like you said, the character, the way they built the characters up in the show, it was was great for this episode. I just don't understand why it felt so slow. Yeah. No. I it, it mean. I, I think I mentioned this last week, but shows that be feeling fast, that's how you know you're just enjoying them. And yeah, like ReZero fucking flew Re-Zero by. happened way too fast, bro. MF Ghost still goes by so and, fast for me. And you know, you know, right. And you know what else went by really fast for me that I'm really surprised about? And I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to agree with me, but tying it out with the Amagami sisters. This most recent episode flew by for me, bro. I was like, "Yo, this is too quick. <laughs> I I need to I need to spin this one back one more time." But I, I thought about dropping that one, but then I'm like, the end was okay. The end kind of saved it because um, when I tell you the tie in the knot with the Amigami sisters is just everything that I've I watched a hundred times. That's you, but I know, me, brother. I know you. You feel how I felt that about Cafe Terrace. You feel how I felt about Cafe Terrace. That's exactly yeah. like it's just it's the same shit, bro. It's the same exact shit. I am going to keep watching it, though. It is 24 episodes. So it's like it's a lot to, to muster. Um, but I am going to keep watching. I am going to keep watching it. Um, I'm going to say yeah, that. Man, that, that end of that episode almost had me. I was like. The, yeah, the end it was the end. It was what got me. <laughs> I was like, he just died. No, I'm just. Nope. Oh man, that was good. That was crazy. Um, everything else I want to keep. Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you watch Spirit Chronicles? Yeah. Yep. Did you see what I was talking about with the language thing? Mm-hmm. And that shit's so cool. I'm like that's it's the coolest cool. shit ever. Cool. <laughs> and and I, I like how they they kind of reiterated me because I'm like, why don't I remember this character? And I I I was going to go back and rewatch like the the last episode of the pre, but mm-hmm. no, I was good. I was good. So yep. I I like how they reintroduced us back to everything again. Um, and then even the people, yeah, <laughs> yep. yep. So I yeah, it's, it. it's it's actually yeah. This is one of those ones I'm I'm excited is back now that I've you know caught back up on it. So with that out of the way, let's talk about some of our favorites. Mm-hmm. Um. You are Miss Servant is probably my number one favorite. Actually, yeah, no, it is my number one favorite. Outside of Reincarnators or Cat, we're not going to count returning shows, okay? ReZero, etc. But Reincarnated, uh, uh, um, You are Miss Servant so far has been top tier. Top tier for me. Very close second tell. If you don't mind me going again. Go ahead. Very, very close second is Samashu mm-hmm. to You Are My Servant. And what both of these give is they give very unique um, precipice on just anime, very anime situations. But they're so unique and interesting that and, and, and what they do extremely well is the characters. Like I'm so emotionally invested in everybody within both of these shows that I'm captivated. I'm captivated by these two shows specifically, and I can't wait to watch them every single fucking week. I get blown back in each of these episodes every time, like every without fail. Um, rather, if it's you are Miss Servant and and the way she's opening up, and even you know meeting his little sister was cool. Slight spoilers. And Sama show 
which was very, very emotional for a, a plethora of reasons for the um, the re- reincarnated wife. Like it was just, it was so good. <laughs> like they're both just so good that I can't believe like that these aren't being talked about anywhere else but here. It feels like, but I also don't you go are- anywhere. <laughs> All right, you are Miss Servant. <laughs> is a treat Mm -hmm. is what i would say beautiful animation Uh, yeah it's literally a treat and then we even got a nice little wrap to this episode this week so good with some nice little um nice little information uh or at least visuals so to speak uh but great wrap to that and it is just been good every single week every Mm -hmm. single week so far um sumo show uh It's, it's hard to say it's not a treat, but it has these moments in there that are so emotionally compelling yes. and, and, and impactful to like think about if you were in that scenario or how these things are playing out. Mm-hmm. Um, you even find yourself in the perspective of trying to be like a 10 year old watching possibly your significant other or your, your child now going on with their lives it's kind of crazy the perspective bro mm-hmm. um and then even we got the mother yes <laughs> the other mother yes <laughs> it's it's a lot going on in terms of emotional intrigue in this show uh so i feel like it, and, and that, that's what's crazy about it. it has these highs and lows mm-hmm. um to where it feels like i can't necessarily say it's a treat because i was almost like dang that's really sad it's very sad right <laughs> right um but yeah, bro, it's, it's it's another one of those shows that I agree is really, really uh, compelling, compelling. And I think that people, more people should be watching it. Look past the title. Um, Please. Yes. So one of my favorites and I, I can't I wait to say it because I know you're about to say it. Polo is not a sports anime guy. Oh, never mind. OK, go ahead. Um, Blue Box. Oh, no. Fuck. Yeah. Say the sports I, anime. I think Blue Box is fucking phenomenal. Um, yeah. I I've enjoyed Blue Box every second I've turned it on. Not yeah. only is it beautiful, mm-hmm. but I, I love like and and like Rob J said. I know we know it's a high school romance joint. We know, yep. you know, he don't mess with the high school romance joints. Neither. But which is sad because this just has such a great feel to it. Um, yes, they are still a little shy and nervous and whatnot. Awkward. But there is still a bit of transparency, so to speak, like in terms of like how the actions play out and the situation even isn't like it's not like one of those situations where it feels awkward. I really do enjoy this. And I feel like even in like what the the second episode when they were he was like pretending like he didn't know her and she was like, oh, I thought we were, we were doing that. And she, I'm like, bro, <laughs> I fucking love these people no, already. I would say you I'm were not, wrong, though. It is very much awkward. It's so much awkwardness in it. I, I'm right. saying it's not as awkward as some other ones that we've seen, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, where we had yeah. to digest these super awkward situations that were like, oh, I'm super scared. Let me, let yeah, me okay, go hide okay. off. And, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of this, like, shy admiration. And mm-hmm. that I can kind of relate to. I can relate to admiring someone and, and being a little shy about it, but still being able to confront them and talk to them. I see. So I feel like it, it's a relatable high school scenario that even at this age we can we can kind of understand yeah. um and then if you don't mind me saying the second one yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like you did uh, and i'm not sure how you feel about this one either but i fucking really enjoy orbs right now um really? i yeah i i think orb um it's talking to me in a sense of like and hear me out my family is is very christian even though you would not necessarily think they were if you knew them in person um I've had to have some some very like you need to do more research conversations with them. You know, or just like it's talking to me directly to my soul. Um, so yeah, I I really enjoy Orb because it felt like it's talking directly to me. Um, so yeah, those those are like two of the ones I'm really enjoying right now. Okay, so I didn't think you were going to go that route for either one of those. Obviously, blue. Uh, I was about to say blue lock. Blue box is absolutely incredible. It is most certainly even in these first three episodes not a sports anime even though it has sports in it it just mm-hmm. has sports anyway and in, in it but it's all about the relationships it's very right. very very compelling too as well um 
but also one of my favorites. I thought you were going to go this route because this show has been absolutely incredible, and that's the most notorious talker. That shit has been so fire, bro. So fire, so, and, and like it's it's fire in a very unique way. Like it's just this MC, the way he moves, the way he operates, feels so refreshing. Because I'm so tired of these MCs that are just so goody and so, I don't know, boring. I love you know, the the way he is. In a way, he I hundred I hundred percent agree with you though. Um, I like how it feels like he's kind of shaking things up because. Yeah. It's not that he's not good. He's not. It's not like he's not a. a right. He can be a, a goody person. You know what I mean. He sure. he just wasn't for those people who were shady to him. Right. Um. And I rock with that because why? Why show loyalty to someone who's not going to give you that back? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, you know, we just kind of get this really interesting progression. And I, I while I do want to see more from him, the show has given us this this kind of like feeling where. We know that his grandfather was the best, right? So to speak. Now, we we kind of have this understanding of like he has to have some more up his sleeve, right? And that's just that's one of the things that always intrigued me is I want to see what's next. I want to see what you got up your sleeve because we not only are you talking a good game, not only are you you smart and able to outsmart others. You know what I mean? Like he he seems like a whole package, and that's a good thing for an MC. But also to have that edge to him is what makes him like just even better. He has the edge to him. He has the goodness to him. He has the smart to him. He has the ability to him. But we just want to see more of the ability. I think I, I think he is a total package. Yeah. We just need a little bit more. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I am going to say mention this though. I have not started Shangri La Frontier yet. Uh, you don't need to. So. I'm not in a rush to either. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it's okay as fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, to go back to let's let's talk about this one because I'm sure the people who are going to want to hear from us because we can't be the only podcast not talk about the popular or the the show. Um, and that's down to Don. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I like it so much more than Undead on Luck. However. So far, right now, this early, three episodes in, I think the main, two main protagonists suck. I don't think they're very interesting at all. And I don't think they're very, <laughs> at word of the week, compelling either. However. Grandma. Grandma, bro. Grandma is the most compelling. She's the most you interesting. You feel me? You she's, me? she's definitely the waifu of the show, for sure. Yeah. By a lot. And um, I think that's she's keeping it more interesting. There was some interesting things that happened. Very interesting visuals, as always. And the show looks amazing. The intro is the only intro during the week I don't skip. Like, it's just the best intro <laughs> this season, easily. Um, but other than that, I just don't. It's, uh, these characters are just. I like uh, Ken a little bit more than the girl. But Ken is also kind of like Vlad of me because he's just very typical shonen protagonist. Uh, very whiny. Yeah, very whiny though. Um, both of them are very, very whiny. It's just a lot of a lot of the shonen shit that's just what Rob talk about. It's just a shonen. It's a shonen, shonen, shonen ass shonen. And that's cool. And that's cool. But I'm I'm enjoying it more so because of the story is more intriguing. Um, the art is more intriguing. And the grandma is more intriguing. <laughs> I mean, can, can, I, can I say something about this show? Yeah, yeah. Grandma was fire. She yeah, was she definitely was fire. Absolutely fire. Um, what I like about the show is some of the context they give. Yeah. Like when they were talking about, oh, well, you you can only use powers in certain domains and whatnot, mm-hmm. like and, and you know, to your deity. Oh, you I mean the grandma like, speak? Yeah. Yeah, grandma. It was all grandma. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's not that I don't, because I, I actually, I have been enjoying the show. Me too. But just hear me out when I say this, because I know this is going to sound crazy. This is probably going to be almost as bad as my two-time speed take. Um, after the intro, I kind of took my headphones off for this anime. <laughs> Easy to do. <laughs> Easy to do. Because you and, can just... And it's not, it's not that I'm not watching. I just take my headphones off and do this. You know what I mean? Like, I just put them on my microphone like this. And I'm just watching listen like that. Yep, because yep. it's just so much easier for my ears. Yeah, I could turn the volume down or whatever. It's, and that's probably what it is, man. I, it's sensory overload. Even for 
you. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's way too much. It's too <laughs> much. It's too much. But too it, much. And hear me out. I found since I've done that though, since I've done that though, it has been significantly more enjoyable. And I watch it, it I watch it like this myself. Like I don't have my headphones all the way on either. It's just too yeah. much. <laughs> oh, so we on the same page. Yeah, we on the exact same page. Like I like the show. The show is good. I think it's better than Undead on Luck and Chainsaw Man, to be honest. I think I think I like it better than both of those. Yeah. I, however, it's just I can't it's too much of these too much. <laughs> it's just I don't know how to explain it more so than it's just saying too much. Um but again the the art style and everything that goes on in the show is fire. Yeah. I, I, there- I'm There's a such thing as overproduced. That's what it can yes, be. It's yes. Overly produced. Yes. And I and I do get I, it's kind of weird still. I still think the first episode was the weirdest of them all with the, them trying to impregnate a young teenage yeah. girl. That shit yeah. way too much. Um <laughs> but other than that, it's like I like the dub. The dub voices are fantastic. Oh, I ain't even touched that yet. Oh really? I thought it's because it's day and date. Oh no, I have, I have because it is dub. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I I just because what it's on. I just turn it on. It's automatically Netflix. Dub. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yep. It's it's. I, I I enjoy the voice actors. It's just you can tell you they were instructed to be what it is, and it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. Yes. Oh, uh, that's funny. But Ken that's, has his moments where he's like cool, you know what I so mean? So cool, right? That's what I'm saying. And then when he get his Ken bag where he cool and she get like soft and cool with him, I'd be like, oh my God, I love that's, these two people. And then yeah. they go away five seconds later. And bro, and it's five seconds we get that. It's only five seconds of, of it. If we can get that all the time, the show would be great. It'd be, it'll be perfect. It'd be great. Um, act like y'all like each other and the show would be amazing. It'd be amazing, bro. It'd be amazing. Let's see, uh, and then every MF goes spectacular still. Uh, Have still. you been watching Ron Kam- Kamadashi, Kamadashi Forbidden Deductions season two, which Rob J yeah. spoke on? He said it is, is continuing on from season one and is fire. I think it's gas immediately. Okay, okay. So I need to finish season one. I, I don't know why I stopped. I don't know why I stopped, and it's so frustrating because it was I was enjoying the show. It, it pop off right into the detective bag, bro. It's Good, right man. There immediately. Good. I don't know why I stopped watching it. When did I stop watching? Let me, you know what? Let me, let me figure that out now. This is in my list. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did I stop? It was because it was really good. Like it was not, nothing about it. I stopped at episode nine out of 13 on season one. So I gotta, I gotta get to the watching now because this shit was fire and it got more interesting, especially yeah. at that episode because of who they introduced and what it implied. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back to that. Thanks, really Rob J. and Tell for mentioning it. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. It's it's, it's been great. Uh, bleach is very much so bleaching. Oh my gosh, um, it, it's turning everything else white because bleach is like, hey, we here. Don't forget. Yeah, no, bleach rezero are both <laughs> carrying this fall easily. It's so good. It's so Drag- good. Dragon Ball Daima. That's, okay, that's one. Thank I you. know people are. I know people are watching it. Um, some people, I'm not sure everybody's watching it. Um, <laughs> this show is ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> it's ridiculous, bro. I'm not gonna recommend it to nobody. Damn, you gotta literally be just straight. You gotta just like Dragon Ball. And and here's the thing. I think as a binge already, I could see it probably being okay. Yeah, but probably it, a better it's, binge. It's nonsense already. Um, they don't know how to fly. <laughs> Cause they gotta refigure it out because they're smaller in body mass now so they like fly wonky but they figure it out after 10 minutes of training or whatever um, <laughs> or a couple yeah. days of training that i i i don't know bro it's dragon ball you can't yeah. expect greatness out of like when i say you can't expect greatness i mean you can't expect like more great story that's yeah. what i mean by greatness you can't expect, you can't expect more expect from dragon ball Right, but I think that the the what makes Dragon Ball interesting is that the world is literally massive. Yeah. Um, the characters are literally some of the largest characters in all of anime, mm-hmm. uh, just because of what they've come from. Right. So it is still enjoyable, so to speak. But this is literally one that I just turn on. And I just it's on my TV, and I just that's it. I just I have it on and I'm watching. I'm, it's not that I'm not paying attention because I'm definitely looking at the screen, but it's like it's Dragon Ball, so mm-hmm. I'm not like I'm not like sometimes I'm checking my phone. It is what it is. It's Dragon Ball. Yeah. 
How about that thing we talked about in a pre-show we save for next week? You want to save that for next week? Because uh, we're 40, 45 minutes in. Okay. So we can save that for next week and get into ReZero, Bleach, and or spoiler talk. Let's do it. Let's get to know my check wife life. This is part of a podcast where one of us rolls a random number generator. The other reads a question associated with that number. It's my turn to, roll to, ra- it's my turn to read the no. question. Tell turn to roll a random number generator. I think it doesn't even it's matter. My, it's my turn. It's my turn. To read the sense. question? No, I rolled a random number generator. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, okay. Um, all right. For 40, 49, 49. Uh, roll, roll again. 42. What is your favorite anime ending sequence? Mm. Let's go with this season. This season? Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. I get hard. Bleach. It's a good one. Very good one. Very, very good one. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, The Most Notorious Talker. Mm. I really like that ending sequence. And then my favorite opening is just Donna Donson. I'm going to just cheat and do that too. Yeah. Yep. All right. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to spoil ReZero. We're going to spoil Bleach. And we're also going to spoil Orb. We'll be right back. After these.
And welcome back to episode 273 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Make sure you uh, follow us on social medias and whatnot, even though we're rarely there. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about war first real quick, because I don't think it's going to be that long of a topic, but I figured we, we knock it out really quick because I got some stuff to say about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So episode three was incredible. It was probably some of the best. It was probably one of the best episodes this season so far. My, I'm not going to count ReZero. Okay. Not counting ReZero in this because ReZero has the best episodes of all time, period. Easy. But Orb, episode three is the best episode I've watched this season, uh, this fall season. Um, then it goes to four. Now, this kind of this kind of goes into the conversation we had on Orb in our form, and I'm going to talk about it here real quick. So I was talking to Fear. One of the Patreon producers. Uh, he says episode three just opened up, uh, just opened this up very wide. Spoilers. And I said yeah. facts. And he says, uh, he said it pulled Oshinoko on us. And like, I actually just watched the episode today because he actually, uh, oh, I watched it. And I said, no, nah, yeah, flipped it upside down. And I need uh, more in watching week to week. And it, and I need more. I'm watching week to week is what I, I meant to say. But I have a feeling that it's not going to carry it as well anymore now that. Uh, now that this happened, or maybe it's different because we didn't see the burnt corpse, um, and we could have. Uh, and I don't know what the fuck I was typing. I was speed <laughs> typing. In his own. Yeah, I was in the zone, and we could have. Uh, and it and that. Okay, basically, what happened in episode three? The kid Rafael that we were following gets burned at the stake for being a heretic because he decided to stick to his guns and say that I'm a I'm a continue to do astrology. And I believe different from what the evangelical Christians believe or whatever the case may be, or Catholics. Um, Yeah, that was so cool. I'm like, yo, they, they just fucking turned this show upside down. However, right. however, with that, my issue is, okay. And I said this in the Discord as well. This could go one of two ways. One, mm -hmm. he's not dead because they didn't show the corpse and he's somewhere in the future, which is entirely still possible. If you watch the outro of Warp, he could still be alive. He could have been released and just moved somewhere else. Um, and he kind of the guy, the other blind guy that they show in the outro kind of looks familiar, but I got a feeling he's dead. Um, if he's not, it'd be better. But if he is, this is how I feel with him gone with me, because I grew to like him a lot immediately they they made him great in in no time almost in no time so i i enjoyed him as a character and really loved what he was about and standing for and, and, and pushing for and then they kill him and then they go into these other two characters now these other two characters are the most uninteresting i couldn't care less about these two guys at all whatsoever they're speaking about stuff that i like again history my two favorite subjects in high school and, and just period in, in life is science and history. Okay. These are two things I am very, very, very familiar with when it comes to both of these things, because I just love those subjects so much. So watching mm -hmm. these two unnamed characters go through a history that I'm already familiar with, obviously not in this great detail. Like I wasn't reading the books about this particular, uh, like moment in time where these people were fighting, right. but I knew of this happening and I knew what they believed and I knew how, you know, the, the way that they believe that the earth and, and, and everything worked. I already knew all that shit. So hearing them go through this and then the whole religious piece of, about it was, it was, it was cool, but I'm like, I don't really care because I, it's like, I don't know these guys at all. I don't, yeah, I don't even care to know them because right. I want to know what happens to Rafael or I want to have more interesting dialogue. The best part about episode four was the realization that Mars ain't going to go in a perfect circle, brother. <laughs> it's <You're> right. <laughs> it's just not. So that was, that was the best part of the episode for me scientifically. But it, what I always say, tell if your characters ain't shit, I'm just not going to care. And I got right. a feeling what it's going to continue to do is it's going to follow the story, this a short story of these two, probably for one or two, maybe three episodes, kill them off in some weird way and or some a super dramatic way, and then move on to another set of characters. 
they're going to keep doing that over and over. And if it goes that yeah. route, I'm just not going to, I don't, I don't care. That's going to be hard. That's yeah. going to be hard to watch and it's going to be hard to enjoy. Exactly. So I'm hoping they don't go that route. I got a feeling they might, if that's the, if that's the plot. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't have nothing wrong with an anthology like that. It's just, yeah. it's not yeah. what I like. The issue is it's going to be hard to make us like characters over and over again, especially yeah. like in the way that they did Rafal. Yep. Um, it's going to be extremely hard to do that. Uh, the only thing they could continue to do is kind of give a story on like in betweens of what he may have done to not, you know get to whatever point that will progress other people forward. Um, if they go that route, but it's still going to suck because it's like, bro, you gave us this character who went from okay to phenomenal like quickly so uh so too quickly <laughs> bro it's crazy um but i i see exactly what you're saying now for me like i like i was saying before this episode or this most recent episode felt extremely personal because i was i remember stepping into college and i remember having a whole conversation it's a little a little personal but my my one of my aunts was like that's what y'all do y'all go to college and all of a sudden y'all stop believing in jesus and i was like you don't know what I ever believed in. Hey, like I said, yeah. low personal. Um, that's a little personal, but just because y'all took me to church don't mean I, I have to believe in anything. And I apologize mm-hmm. for those who listen who are that. But for me, it was extremely personal because it's one of those things where as soon as you want to learn something different, uh, the world is kind of pushing against it. And in yes. art history is where I kind of really got uh, this insight to this specific movement, right? Um, Where I had to learn about, I was first learning about the structures that they were building for these specific movements and why they were building these structures to actually line up with the stars and the Mm -hmm. sun and the moon and things like that, right? But then only for for them to also say, all the the nonsense that they believed at the time that the earth was at the center of the world. And it was like, that's crazy. You built these structures around it. And then you look at other structures that you modeled after and you realize that they were lined up with entirely different, you know, galactic bodies. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hold up. That's right. And ours is wrong, even though we're building it for this purpose. And it's like, it's, it's to me, it's overwhelmingly interesting because I have so much like, time delved into this i know like that's like you said you you also do as well but it's like it's not even the two mcs that i care about it was specifically that like those Message. final moments with that dude yeah the, the, the heretic. i was like yeah i was like bro i fucking love the heretic dude mm-hmm. and i feel like he's going to be like kind of like the staple character um who's going through shifting and changing people i think that's the dynamic that they're going for is like it's not about these characters that we get in passing it's about the message getting spread to all these different people and how it expands maybe i don't know i can see this going very south very quickly though yeah um because, because there were parts where i was like i don't care nothing about these characters just like you yeah it's so i understand so think about this there's a 10-year gap in this 10-year gap you mean to tell me that it's going to be another uh, it's going to it's, it's just, just going to be uh, heretic after heretic like you said, which is honestly, truly, you were absolutely right, are the best pieces of the episodes. Like the heretic for Rafael was huge, but Rafael just happened to be that this refined character. It Man. felt it just felt better with him. These two, the heretic carried the entire episode. Because and if it was just he was the last five, four, three minutes. <laughs> exactly. If it wasn't for him, the episode would have been a shitter. But because of that heretic and the message he was delivering and even the character's reaction to that message was cool because of the heretic. It's just going to be, I think it's just going to be the same thing though. The heretic is going to get to a point. He's going to pass this message. They're going to go to the box. Eventually they'll die 10 years again mm-hmm. or you know, five years or whatever. However, they're going to, to justify this anthology aspect that they're pushing on it. I don't see it working out, but I can see them doing this because of it being 25 episodes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like 25 and, episodes is very, very long for you to kill Rafael in episode three. Yeah. And and I think that the, the strongest thing this, this show has going for it is not the characters, but the world being a character. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And and what makes that so strong is that we know how that is. Yeah. We, we know what this world is like just through historical context and textbooks mm-hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. So because we have that, that's the only thing it really has going for it in that regard, because if you're going to keep killing off the characters, it's going to be a struggle. Um, and we, we're going to have to rely heavily on the world because we already have an entirely different cast of characters in this episode. Yep. 
I'm intrigued. The only, I'm, only, only constant is the world. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're, I'm intrigued, and it's very is it'll be an inc- I think this show is, will be the perfect Netflix binge. I don't think it's a good week to week Netflix show. I, I, I'm just going to admit it. I don't think it's going to be a good week to week Netflix show. I am going to continue next episode though, only because I need to know if if where what I surmise in my earlier thought to be true. If that to be true with how they're going to, to process this show, I'm probably just going to binge the rest. If not, I'm, I'm praying it's not. I want to. I want to watch it week to week and continue. But that's why I didn't mention it during the uh, cut part because I, it's it's like a weird in between because I'm not cutting it. There's no way I'm not going to watch a scientifically historical show. Like there's just there's just no uh, specifically space science uh, science and history is is two of my favorite things and and ever. So I'm going to watch it, but it's either going to be a binge or going to be a week to week. And so far, it's got the week to week steal for now because episode three was so powerful. And then the end of this episode was good because of, like you said, the heretic. But I just don't know if I if if this character switching and shit is going to be good enough or the, the science is going to be good enough to carry the, the character switching because I, it's going to just keep spouting shit. I already know like it's going to if we're going to keep bypassing time and then we're going to get to the point where they finally discover that how the universe actually works. I don't need to see that. <laughs> You know, speaking of that, I, we got to do an after story one day because I, I just watched a, a Neil deGrasse Tyson video. It's pretty funny. Which one? Um, I think it was about Planet X. Oh, OK. I, I love the ep- epigenetic shit. I was like, yo, he's they spitting in here. Yeah, straight oh, up, go ahead. Straight up, straight up. Anyway, yeah, it was good. It was it was it was, you know, I just it's hard. It does have a 79 on on, on any list and I get it. It's I, I definitely get it. It's pretty. It's very uh, impactful, um, which and unique. Which is funny to me, right? While I enjoy the show, okay. I can see why a seventy nine would even feel high. Yeah, um, oh yeah, <laughs> because it's like the the attributes that I would say are good are not overwhelmingly good in regard to like my chick wife who I food grading skill. Mm-hmm. Animation is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, like, okay, okay. Uh, story is is cool, but it's like we we don't know what's going on. Pacing, we have no idea what's going on yet. So for for right now, I could see it being lower than a seventy nine. The thing that's, that's keeping it together is that world. Um, and like I said, it's unique. It's very it's 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 unique to the anime space. Like you don't see this often, fact. if if ever, you know. So I get it. Um, it's just for me. It's just I, you know, I need a little. Bit all right, moving on. The greatest of all times, three zero, brother. Oh my goodness. Um, so this, like you said, this episode felt like five minutes. There is so many things in this episode that happened that have me gone. Like, okay, Subaru developed a new move where he can't mm-hmm. be touched. It's incredible. First off, developing moves with Beatrice is already incredible. To know that he he worked that hard is is dope. Um, and then for him to use the sloth uh, ability, mm-hmm. incredible. And then two for him to land a shot on Regulus, shocking, mm-hmm. very shocking to me because I didn't think Regulus could even be touched. I thought that was his authority, like he couldn't be touched for some reason, but. He couldn't see it. He didn't know what was happening. Yeah. I mean. Which could yeah. be a good thing for the future. We, yeah. We got some information. Got some information, which is the most important part. Then we go to Garfield's story, which Man. had me gut punched, emotional. When he started crying, I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I shed a tear because I'm like, fuck. Shout out to oh. Mimi. Mimi, like, I love Garfield. I'm like, oh, she's so fucking adorable, man. Go, man. Gorgeous it's, tiger. It was just it, that that whole part was incredible. And I know I'm a speed running, but I just got to I got to get all my thoughts out while I still have them in my head. And then fucking four archbishops are here. All of them pulling up. What the fuck are we supposed to do with four archbishops? Die over and over and over again. Right. That's all they that's all we can do, brother. 
I don't know. Like I said, I, did I? I think I said this in what was it the forums probably? How do we win? How do you win, bro? How do you? I don't. I don't know how you win here, and it is, and it's that's what ReZero does so well. Because when Pepto Geese first got on the screen, I didn't. How the fuck were they going to win? Like I didn't. That was the same thing I thought. I'm like, how are you going to beat these cultists? And how are you going to beat Pepto Geese? And he ended up finding a way. Yep, yep. Very trial and error, like. But it was so dope. It's so dope. But this time, I just don't know. I have zero idea. Yeah. I. I. So I. We know that all the the cultists or archbishops are not on the same page. Um. But they do follow the gospel. The issue is, is that they don't have one, you know what I mean? Or, or, well, they can get one, but it's not, no, Subaru has a gospel, doesn't he? Yeah, Subaru has a gospel, but it, you, you can't. Yeah. I mean, he did. I don't know if he still does. So it's not, not really much that uh, they can do, right? Mm-hmm. So only thing he can really do is try and get them to have in, internal strife but i mean brother there's so much going on man uh so archbishop much. of uh wrath she is like realizes subaru is using beto geese's power mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's like oh, you're here i knew it was you oh my god and the fact and the fact that subaru tried to take advantage of that was fucking funny it was genius though yeah, right because so he was smart. like hold up <laughs> why don't you why don't you fight him then she's like hold up i gotta follow gospel i gotta leave <laughs> and, and uh i'm gonna kill her because of the fact that she's with you and i know you wear her you want her and it's like although she's clearly like crazy psychotic delusional mm-hmm She's not crazy psychotic delusional in the in the case of like she's gonna forget what her purpose is. Right. And that to me symbolizes that these characters' craziness is not I'm not gonna say it's a it's a technical craziness. I think it's a character trait, mm. if that makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like a uh an, an affliction, like a like a curse or a virus, so to speak, yeah. right? So that so that these characters having these certain personality types are stuck with them because of what they're supposed to represent, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's so dope because she has logic, she is smart, she just has to act in this manner for what her her purpose is. So I think that's dope, and I also um, seeing Subaru basically borderline lose a leg and. Uh, Bro, Bayako killing everybody because everybody still suffered the same blow that he suffered, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then that's the thing too with the power. If one person suffers an, a something, everybody suffers it. If she suffers something, everybody suffers it. So basically, it's like if you I'll look at her, her, you can't hurt anybody in that area, and you can't hurt her. Yep. Unless you disconnect everybody, Shamak does not disconnect people, um, because it's a literal mind control. So, we, bro, and they were talking for several minutes in between that moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you you would have had time for these people to like be, uh, I guess taken off of this effect some some way or or some you know some way of sort or something like that, but it didn't happen. So it just leads to like, how is Subaru going to have to, he's going to have to make a plan around this. Yeah. That's what, it, that's what kills me for one. The, when wrath started losing her shit, she was about to fucking blow a million of the smithereens. Mm-hmm. Regulus decides I'm going to take her. Make him make her his 79th wife. For some reason he can't take damage. Um, his authority prevents, seemingly presents that da- prevents damage um so it's like it's it's just so much within this where i just think to myself i'm like how do you win and then you got greed pulling up and completely uh can smash in a guard like no not greed um gluttony gluttony can smash in a guard like it's fucking weird that was crazy like what? Was that was that how is that how gluttony eats what, yeah what is yeah, it 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 is baffling to me, but like I really wish Super would have met Gluttony because if he would have met Gluttony, he probably would have lost his shit and did whatever he could to try to kill him. 
crazy. But then because, we have lust. Oh, but go ahead, go ahead. Because he he would get a rim back if if that was if you kill gluttony, it, theoretically. So I mean, hopefully Subaru realizes that when he does see him eventually. But then you got lust who. I don't. We haven't even really seen yet. I don't even know. I like I see her on the picture, but I don't know what the fuck. So it's gluttony, greed, wrath, and lust. Sloth is already dead. Sloth is dead, which is Bethel Geese. You got Pandora, which is the leader of all of them, I think. Mm -hmm. Seems like she is. And then they're after the bones of Minerva? Or is it no? The Witch of of Wrath, I think. Okay, the the healing chick. That's Minerva. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that That was Minerva, which is the healing chick. I, my thought is okay. Here's this: Subaru knows these witches very personally, mm-hmm. all of them. Why? Why couldn't he, or can't he? He probably can't go back right to the tea party. Obviously, not too soon. Yeah, yeah. But like, wh- why wouldn't the witches mention anything about these cultists? being devoted to them in what seemingly is the wrong way. Because these witches aren't what these cultists are, I think. Right? Yeah. I just that that is the only part of ReZero that still baffles me. And ReZero don't do shit for no reason. So it's like I I wonder where that all correlates. Maybe I'm just thinking too far ahead. Which is entirely possible. So <clears throat> they are, yeah, bro. You know they, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying Isn't to like baffling though. Piece these parts together because the overall game plan, right? They have to have a plan because they had a plan since before Subaru even came to this world. Yeah, 100%, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what is the game plan? Is the game plan for Pandora? Is it for her to do something specific? Is Pandora trying to revive the witches? Because that's what it seems. Petrogis was trying to kidnap Amelia to have him take over for Echidna. Or no, no, not Echidna. The sloth, but right? We, but we haven't figured out why Amelia is so specific in this scenario, right? Because clearly Amelia is extremely specific and, and important to this. Is it someone only a half witch can do? Like mm. something that they, this half human, half elf, that's yeah. why she has to do it. Because she had the, the key. Because she was important to her mom in Petal Geese way back when. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, she, she had that key to that door. Right. Which she never opened. Which is what Pandora's entire goal was back then. Ah, it's just, a, it's so much. It's so tough to even try to piece together. But however, I just think it's the cast of characters in ReZero is some of the best. Not only that, the growth of the world is just is so much here, right? Like you got you got somebody who got reincarnated 400 years ago who created basically this this town who was around when the witches were around that we don't have the full story of looking at the art on Annie list to see them going face to face against the witches cult. I mean, we have Ryan Hart, so that can take care of probably two of them. And I think Ryan, uh, Ryan Hart can take care of greed and, and gluttony. Um, I don't know what you do with wrath. I don't like, she's the one she's, I think personally, probably more powerful than anybody because of, because of the damage she can do to other people. Which makes it hard for you to figure out what to do against that. Here's my issue with Reinhardt. Is that I feel like utilizing him too frequently will get him taken off the board. Yeah, of course. That's exactly how it's going to go. It has to, right? Yeah. But because it's going to be another thing that pushes them into a corner, right? Yeah. Um, And I think it's going to be like... It, it will be soon, in, in my opinion, because we have four archbishops in this place. Mm. <laughs> four of them, which he he didn't have to draw a sword to fight one. 
he's probably gonna have to draw a sword to fight two. But to fight four with people who can can quite literally do almost nothing to her because of to them because they don't they 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 can't get past the authorities. Yeah, so this is the thing, so with Ryan Hart, because he sucks the mana from the air, he's going to be taken off the board because he has to fight somebody that's away from everybody else. Because mm-hmm. then if you take if you fight, if you put Ryan Hart in a fight where everybody else is around, you can't heal right. nobody because there's no mana in the world or a mana around. You can't use any arts because he sucks up the mana in the entire area. You can't use bad code. You can't use Mimi because she, even though she's one of the most powerful mages, you can't, like, you can't. There's so many yeah. people taking out because of Ryan Hart's innate ability that you gotta, you gotta kind of take that shit somewhere. And I think. I'm praying that he goes against greed because I think that's the only person that he can probably go toe to toe with without it being that big of a problem. But and, and yeah, and I'm I'm kind of I think he got to take. I think it can't be greed though, and I'm only saying that because I think they have to get him to get wrath away because if he can shut down her if he's not affected by her authority but he can't fight her in a crowd and if anybody else fights her in a crowd how do they get rid of her authority and not kill people so here's the thing it's not based off of just looking at her is it do we know that well we know that when Subaru was turned away from her, he was being forced to turn to her, but he wasn't fully committed to the, the, the like gambit of being stuck in the, the trance until he did look at her. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. So I, I think it's like a twofold thing. Like it's a presence thing. Right. But it's still in, within her authority. Right. So, so it's like, so it, it's probably, you have to pay attention to her. That seems yeah. like the authority, right? Like in order how to do you share not pay pain. Exactly. Because they forced, he was forced to turn around. You know what I mean. So that's why I'm saying it, it might have to be for her, because I think that greed Subaru has a way of. I think Subaru has to fight greed one on one. Really? Yeah, I she think. I think greed is intense. I I think it's going to be a scenario where he is the only person who can do anything against him because of his authority, mm. with the the invisible hands. Uh. Well, he can't use yeah. it because it t- it takes it chews up his fucking mana right. gate or, or soul or whatever fuck it chews up. But so. he has to he has to practice that. You know what I mean? He got time before. But he has to he has to it has to be something like that, bro. He, maybe he'll, he'll have to practice while dying and <laughs> something like that. But either way, he's got to get that down because I I feel like he's going to be the only one who can handle greed. Him and Beiko. I'm just praying that there's a not a different save point. I'm praying that it gives him time to set and because again that 15 minutes that he got with Wrath is tough. Mm-hmm. It's a tough save point. It's the toughest save point of all of ReZero ever, bro. Like, That's crazy. Like it's 15 minutes of you have to get all this shit in place. How how do you do that? Realizing that 15 minutes pass and you fight Wrath, which couldn't be no more than five minutes of them fighting for her to get kidnapped from Greed and then you got Five minutes after that, probably maybe because they they have a conversation for about five minutes. It seems to Man. then them get called by the gospel to the to the tower, to the announcement tower, the government building mm-hmm. where Garfield mother's children are. So it's like, how do you get all of these pieces in place within that time? They're they're interweaving all of these different story elements to bring them all into this this head. Yep. Um, now they did have the con- the council though, so they're going to figure out a plan. Yep, that's where but, we last left off. But we don't we don't know what the plan looks like yet. Yeah. So fucking, it's tough. It's, it's we spent a lot of time. Holy shit, we spent a lot of time. Your anime. It's it's the greatest anime of all time. Um, it's very very. It's just built so well. Like the whole thing is just built so well. You cannot deny it. Anyway. You can definitely tell they're pulling from a novel. Yeah, hundred percent. Definitely a novel, and not a like a manga for sure. Very vast, different, um, different. And apparently, media. they're still skipping details. Still skipping details, which is wild because I don't even know what the fuck you can. How? Anyway, I was, it's a YouTube video. A YouTube do I follow? They say information is being skipped. Mm. 
You might have to uh, do a deep dive on that on, um, after story. Interesting. That's scary. All right. Anyway, moving on to Bleach, which continues to cook too. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, dude, I just love the way like characters who you didn't think had that much of a role has the hugest role. And to get the backstory of this captain who was kind of on the side for, for the majority of Bleach, right? We knew he was powerful, innately powerful, mm-hmm. um, which he was. He grew up with our guy. I forget his name. I don't know none of their names. <laughs> I know Sosuke Eisen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's like that, that. And then you got to learn that I mean, the way they decide to keep the, the Soul King alive by because of the Kamaki, whatever the fuck, his right arm basically being a part of this this captain. Very intriguing. Um, but I must say, the fact that they just now, and I mean Chad and Odahime and Yorichi and Ganju, just now decides to attack fucking Yawak, Yawak together after after Ichigo was shooting them. Man. Made me laugh. They, the, it's because they couldn't do anything to begin with, bro. I guess that's true. What much? What? But get in the way, probably, right? Right, right. Yeah. They they couldn't do anything to begin with because I mean we we saw what happened to uh we saw what happened to the head captain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How so, I he got destroyed. Yeah. After he put all that. All that pep in his step, he got yeah, and then, and then none of them are squad zero other than the Ichigo, so yep. it's it's kind of hard That's to true. imagine they can do anything. It, the most they can do is be a distraction, and not to mention that we know they don't know. Yeah. You watch, sees everything, <laughs> minus the arm minus. coming up and fucking keeping the soaking alive. Yeah, which yeah. is crazy because he was already split in half. But I digress. But yeah, bro. Um, what do you so think? Eisen. I was about to say that because that's this that's the main bread and butter of this episode. What for one poor guy decided to try to run up? Don't be stupid. My spiritual that pressure. Was, that was dumb. Why yeah. would you? <laughs> it's like why would you do that? Don't do that. But that conversation between those two was epic, mm-hmm. to say the least. Because he's like, well, why would I even care about what the fuck is going on? Well, don't you want to go get some fresh air? He freed his ankles his eye. and one, one eye and said, how does it feel? He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm the man. <laughs> Basically. You, you, know, you know what it feels like. I'm the man. <laughs> you, you came to see me, brother. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, Yo. like, it's like, so how do you feel about the, basically said, asking him, how do you feel about the soul society about to be crushed? Like, why would I care <laughs> about, the, why would I want to go see Let's see this guy right now, you know? I'm interested to see what the plan is with, with taking him up there. You know what I mean? And why did that council member defy towards him? That just, just still baffles me. Like, I have to restrain you. Ah! So, like, you idiot. Like, you, it's clear. It's Eisen, bro. You can't. And it's Eisen uh, post-transformation and shit. So you should have even been scared. You should have just been scared to begin with. So I ain't gonna lie to you. And like, I'm not even a person who just be scared of randomness. Mm-hmm. You should have been scared. 100%. So the only question that we have to ask is what do they do with Eisen and where do they go from here? I don't know what Eisen can do. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like I know what he, we know what he can do. Yeah, yeah, obviously. We know what he can do. But he already got beat by Ichigo. Right. And he could still, he would get mopped by Ichigo now. Ichigo it, now would destroy him. I think that the, the point of it has to be uh, utilizing like a specific niche within his ability, obviously, to try and alter reality for your watch or something. But I feel like he see it coming. You know, I, I don't know. This is my question. And please help me if you can remember this. What could Aizen do? Aizen's ability was if you saw his sword, he could mind control you. Mind well, control not mind you? control. If you saw his sword, he can control all of your senses. Mm. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at Aizen's bio real quick. A folk and intellectual often uh, addressing his subordinates by their given names. 
He really shows any sign of alarm or distress. And often his entire situation is planned out well in advance. Never confronted, Eisen's is casual and uncaring, attempting to draw out a conversation and make small talk, which often infuriates the one he's talking to. Eisen initially appeared to be very kind, well-respected, and has always looked up by many, especially his lieutenant. Yeah, so so here, here here's the breakdown, right? Here's how it works. Activation. Anyone who sees Kyoko Sugetsu releases e- release even once falls under his spell. Control. Mm. Eisen completely controls five senses of anyone under Ka- Kanzen Simon. He can make them see, hear, feel, smell, or taste anything he wants. This allows him to cr- create inc- incredibly realistic illusions that are virtually impossible to break. Basically, he, he, his, the duration is hypnosis remains in effect even if Eisen is no longer present. The victims remain trapped in the illusion until Eisen chooses to release them. Mm. And then with his so, intellectual capabilities... All you gotta do is see it once. That's why everybody just they always believed Eisen was good. You saw his story, didn't you? He's gotta be good. Yeah. That's a good guy over there. Yeah, so my thought is like Yeah. Maybe hey, what? Look at yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, maybe that is the goal, but because he doesn't have the ability to rewind time or anything. He doesn't have the like I just don't know how he He's like the only person that can be effective against you, right? Like, when you think about it. He sees everything, so, I mean, he can't not see the sword. Yeah, but when he sees the sword, is he going to understand he's in a Genjutsu? <laughs> he's in a Yenjutsu, you know Like, Right, though. It's tough to even wrap my head around, but I'm, I'm just, I need to, like, I can't, I can't predict Bleach. I just, it's so hard. But we are getting washed right now, basically. We're losing big time. Yeah, heavy. And then with Ichigo mental breakdown, I think he's going to... Something's going to snap. I don't know. He needs, he needs to full bring her hollow fi and fucking... <laughs> <laughs> full, Quincy full, up. Full bring her fi. <laughs> full bring her fi, Quince. Right. <laughs> and then and, and get, get to doing something. I think Aizen is going to replace the Soul King. You think so? I don't know. That's just a guess. I think that's what they're initially trying to go for. But I could be wrong. Hard to tell. It's gotta be everything. Yeah. Oh, true. He's not everything. It's gotta be Ichigo. It's going to be Ichigo. Still, I still go stand by my previous statement there. Anyway, tell. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Tell on all social media. You can follow media. our social media is at Mike Check Wife on Twitter and at Mike Check Wife Wife on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, and as always. My 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 check. Check, 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 check. Eyes in about the fuck. We are now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu.